Vení, cuy. <coughs> All right. Hello, everybody. Benvenuto. Welcome. Uh, io presento, I present, this is Fiorella, this is my nonna, nonna looking at the camera, ah. say hi. She's going to be helping us with the wine tasting and uh, hopefully giving you guys some history on, uh, you know, wine making and just Italian wine culture in general. Um, let's see, we're starting off today, always got to go white first. This is a Grechetto, this is from Umbria. Umbria is one of the few regions in Italy that does not touch the water. It doesn't have any coasts. The other two regions would be Lombardia and Piemonte and also Valle d'Aosta, which is a very small region. Uh, it's a light white wine. nonna has been begging me for a glass of wine. She can't sit here and look at it, so might as well pour it. But it's a very light white wine. It definitely goes well with seafood, uh, grilled fish. Um, I know anchovies and sardines aren't exactly the most uh, popular seafood here, but I'm telling you, give it another shot. If you get them fresh, you can find them fresh. With this kind of wine, it's perfect. And uh, <clears throat> at All Spiced Up, they have tons of different spice blends that go really well with fish. Um, I think one of them's called Angler's Spice Blend. Um, Anna, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but they, get, they have a ton of different uh, spice blends going from salmon to white fish. Ti piace? Sì. È fresco. E che grado è? Che, quanti gradi? Ok. E she wants to know the alcohol percent. In inglese. Mm -hmm. Parliamo in inglese. How uh, we said the great... The alcohol percentage? Alcohol okay, percent. it's 13% alcohol. Um, Grechetto is the name of the grape and also the name of the wine. Mm -hmm. uh, Umbria is the region. Like I said, it's central. And uh, for all you kids out there, I have an atlas here from 1970, <laughs> and it's a, totally in Italian. So let's see if I can pull it up here. I don't know if you guys can see this or not, hopefully. I uh, see Yeah, yeah, of course. Okay, let's see here. It's great to know the geography of the wine. So this is Umbria. Right here, dead center of the entire continent, or excuse me, the entire peninsula. No, it's okay, no, it's okay. Just sit down and enjoy your wine. Uh, the town that it's made is right here, where it actually says Umbria, so it's in the middle of the middle, right in the middle of the boot. Uh, very green, rolling hills, lush area. Not super mountainous, but very hilly <clears throat> and very green. I mean, it is... It is just rolling green grass hills, very beautiful, um, very similar to Tuscany. It borders Tuscany yeah, as well as Lazio. Oh my God, yeah, we'll point with a knife. <laughs> use a knife in this house to point at anything on a map. You have to use a knife. Okay. Okay. Anyway, let's get into it. Let's do a sniff, a swirl, and a sip. The nose is, you get a ton of pear, fresh pear, um, very light bodied, um, acidic, but not overly acidic. Just enough to where it would almost be like the squeeze of lemon that you would put on a fish. This could almost be a replacement for that. Now, you still want to squeeze a little bit of lemon on your fish, feel free to. But yeah, very bright, bright fruit. I get a ton of pear. Um, it's very crisp. Not super full bodied, so I mean it goes down really easy. It's got a beautiful straw color. It's not, not too too. Um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? It's it's um, it doesn't stick to the glass too much. It's it's got just enough acidity and a, and a light enough body um, to where you can drink plenty of it without you know feeling overly full like some of these <clears throat> full bodied oaky chardonnays. It's got the opposite effect as that. No, no. Do you know? Um, do you know much about Umbria, the region that this wine comes from? Do you say cosa di Umbria? No, 
no, back in her day, going all the way to Umbria from where we're from, and we're from Piemonte, which is far northwest it's, corner. It's the opposite. That would be like her going to Antarctica. Like it's just back in the sixties. Uh, that was just that was just too far of a trip. No one ever did that. <laughs> if she went to the next town over, that was like being an astronaut. So, you guys can pick up a bottle of this. It all spiced up. Uh, it's 12 bucks right now. Um, if, if you buy all three of the wines that I have for you guys, there's a discount. And with that discount, this bottle will be $12. And this is very, very delicate. This is as nice of a white wine as you can buy. Um, a lot of white wines are made here in the US, can be kind of overpriced because um, there's saturation in the market because of their popularity. and. These Italian white wines are all, I mean, they're equal quality and you're never gonna see them for that kind of crazy over $30 price range. So um, and it's not about saving money, it's grape juice is good grape juice is good grape juice and Italians know how to do it. Chin chin. Oh, chin, you chin. might be wondering why I'm wearing what looks to be a, a referee jersey. Um, I'm not a referee, but if I was, Nona would be, probably be giving me the yellow card. <laughs> but um, uh, we're both Juventus fans because Juve is the primary team. They're the first place Italian team in their soccer league, and they were just playing, and I think the game might have just ended, and we won. So, salute, forza la Juve. Oh, Nona, we can't cheers on an empty glass. That is absolute bad luck for life. So... In recognition of Juventus, we'll move on to the next wine. Um, what we have here is a, here, let me give you a splash of water. We go all the way to the northwest of Italy, to where we are from, the region of Piemonte. Piemonte, Piemonte means foot of the mountain in Italian. And it's called that because it is right on the foot of the Apennines and the Alps. Yes. It's kind of catty corn. the Alp and Apennine. Where they meet. They meet. Yep. It's just the long So they're catty they cornered behind two mountain ranges that are yes. both enormous. One and, uh, goes like that, like mm -hmm. that, and the other mm -hmm. one goes like yep. that. Yeah, let me turn this. There we go. That's better. Anyway, it's very mountainous. So it's... Uh, there's foothills. We're from the foothills leading up to the Alps and up to the Apennines, so it's not crazy mountainous, but uh, you can see on a clear day, which there's not many clear days. Um, you can see Monte Cervino. Monte Cervino, and then there's another mountain Cervino called... Cervino, um, I mean the... Yeah, the... the, um, the Cervi, the, yeah, 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 the, uh, que ano, que ano, uh, que ano, Oh, the deer, deer, deer. Um, and there's another mountain in Piemonte that... Um, you might know in French is called Mont Blanc, and in Italy they call it Monte Bianco. It's the biggest, the biggest mountain in Europe, all of yeah, Europe, right? Yeah. yeah. By, by a long shot, it's it's massive, it's terrifying. They're really they make the Rockies look like foothills. So, anyway, so we got a Barbera d'Asti. See if you guys Asti can see that. Asti from Acqui is probably thirty kilometer. Maybe less, maybe even less. Yeah. So from our hometown, Asti, which is Asti is a absolutely beautiful place. I was just there in, I think, October or early November. Uh, I kind of drove through it. It is one of the most elegant. It's not very big. Um, it's bigger than where we're from, but um, it is a huge winemaking area. Um, you can tell there's a lot of money coming in out of there. It's Everything's relatively well-maintained, even though everything's very old there. And I mean, every little hill around the town has a big castle on it that's uh, probably a winemaking facility. Anyway, this is a Barbera, Barbera d'Asti. So it's the grape is Barbera. Uh, Barbera, I believe, is the second most planted grape in Italy, I believe. I think Sangiovese is number one. But this is the second most planted grape in Italy. The name of the wine is called Duelilu. <clears throat> I don't, uh, she speaks Piemontese. Piemontese is a nearly dead language that some would call it a regional dialect in Italy, but it really doesn't sound or look or feel like Italian at all. It is closer to French, but not really modern French. It's closer to what French probably sounded like in 500 AD. 
It's a super old language. It's very girdial and grunty, and <laughs> it's it's pretty. But uh, I gotta say that they chose Tuscan, the the Tuscan dialect. I think from Siena, Sienese, Sienese. is the current, basically the chosen language for all of Italy because Italy was very. Um, uh, all the different regions had different dialects and oh, nobody yeah. could get along with each other. Um, nobody could oh, communicate yeah. with each other. I and mean, all the way in Sicily, they were speaking totally different tongues. So uh, they, they chose they chose Italian for, for the main language. And uh, they chose the Tuscan because it sounded the most beautiful and it was kind of the more similar middle ground meeting area. So anyway, back to the wine. This is a Barbera um, from Piemonte. Um, it's more of a light bodied red. It's lighter on the tannins, but it's high in acidity. So uh, it goes really well. Here, let's pour this water out. It goes really well with any bitter cheeses, anything that's fatty, because the acid content helps you cut through that fat. Um, so like gorgonzola, any kind of blue cheese. Yeah, I give her a lot. <laughs> okay, salute, nonna. Forza Juve. Salute, dinero y amor. Money and love. Right? Salute, dinero. Okay. Dinero y soldi. Y soldi o dinero. No, okay, dinero. Salute, dinero y amor. Okay. And love. Yeah, amore. 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 Don't, don't change amore. the Spanish. Don't yeah. change the Spanish. No, but amor. We're breaking generational barriers and language barriers, folks. Um, <laughs> she speaks, uh, I speak almost three languages. I'd give myself enough credit to say that, but uh, she's fluent in English, French, Spanish, Italian, and Piemontese. <laughs> And probably El Latin Piemontese, too. Piemontese. Piemontese. One of the she's El probably la, one la of the few few thousand people left. I mean, there can't be too many. Yeah, the language of the Cavour family, which were um, medieval rulers of the area. Um, anyway, what do you think of the Barbera, Nona? Molto buono. It's very good. So, Nona's grandfather. Um, Michele Porta. Michele Porta. Her name is Fiorella Porta. Um, so my great-great-grandfather uh, made Barbera, was probably the predominant grape that he grew. Um, he actually was quite famous in northern Italy for uh, his wine production. He got the, he got the uh, uh, a certificate. Award. He got the award. He got the award for... Um, le, ha innestato, ha innestato le viti dalla, dalla, eh, dalla perché le, avevano yeah. le viti, le viti avevano la filosera. Okay, so I'll translate. So, in the early 1900s, I think even in the late 1800s, there was a disease killing all the grapevines and basically all of Western Europe. Even filosera. Filoxera was the name of the this disease that was killing all the vines and there was virtually no wine production. Um, and thanks to their good friends in the and United then States. And they nested from, right. the, from, the, 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 uh, from what? I'm, I'm, I'm explaining that. So they, they basically borrowed vines from mainly their cousins that had moved maybe a generation or two ago. Uh, a lot of Northern Italians, uh, they didn't go to New York, they actually went to California. There's a view, very small population from northern Italy that came to the U.S. Most of the northern Italians stayed. Southern Italians, as we know, like in, in New York and the Northeast, um, a lot of them went. But northern Italy mainly stayed. Anyway, their cousins in California were winemaking. Um, that They had brought uh, vines over, so they were in California, so there was no phylloxera over there. So they had their cousins or whatever, people that they know, uh, send back vines and they grafted the vines, essentially cloning cloning what they had and my my great great grandfather my, my, won the award for the best wine grafting and in my and my my father too yeah and yeah. and your father yeah. yeah and here we are it's they all were come full nesting. circle they, they call it yep. eh, bisogna innestare yep. fanno un taglio fanno in inglese no, in inglese they, you have to say there it in is english here there is the 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 come si chiama il there the vine. The vine. Mm -hmm. And here they make a nest and they do 
they cut they it, it yeah. like that, and then they put a new, mm -hmm. a, a new. Uh, what do you want in? Uh, what kind of do you want inside? What kind of vine you, you want? Put yeah. Inside. Right. You put inside. Nesting. Yeah. Okay. And, and, so that's why they call then, it nesting. And then with an elastic, yeah. you go put it around. That was very technologically advanced for back in those days, because we're talking in the nineteen twenties, nineteen thirties. Um, so yep, yeah, that's Nona grew up uh, squashing grapes with her feet, and um, we made it right in our house. Uh, the house is still there. <clears throat> it's it's a house and essentially we a winemaking still have facility. The torque, yeah. Yep, the the torque for turning. It's basically for juicing, and getting, extracting everything you can, and it separates the seeds and the stems. And then I what her father? It's very expensive now. That yeah. Yeah, not now. It's it's sitting in our in our no, haunted but I cantina. Mean it's a, <laughs> now it, it's a, a a very old torque. You yeah. Know, so it's, I don't know uh, if it works anymore, yeah. but it looks cool. It looks it looks really cool. I wish we could have it out in our yard, but it would be a pain in the butt to fly it all the way to the U.S. But uh, yep. So then when he separated the seeds and the stems, and it, like I said, mostly everything he made was Barbera. Made a little bit of Corona, uh, Bonarda, Grignolino, Fresa. Um, but everything that they made back then, mostly everything, was frizzante. And you'll see a lot of other Barberas that are frizzante. And it's basically a play off the word fizzy, like we use in English. Um, it doesn't mean it's sparkling. It just means it's fizzy. It means it's, like, alive. Whereas, like, spumante would be what you find when you drink, like, a Prosecco, which is very bubbly and alive. And frizzante, this is not frizzante. Um, this would be more of a dinner wine when you drink a still barbera. But uh, I get huge notes of plum, um, cherry. You get cherry, Nona. It's very, it's got a lot of spice going on. Uh, nice acidity. I don't know if you guys can see the color. It's got a beautiful kind of a garnet, dark purple color to it. Um, it's got yeah, some nice tannin. But it's light. It's got just enough fruit to kind of make you snap, smack your lips. Um, gives you a little bit of a tingling in your jowls. Um, but it's a very versatile wine because it's light but still has a, a kind of a punch in your mouth kind of feel to it. And it's 14% alcohol, which you don't see too many Italian red wines go over that. So that's about the limit. There might be a couple out there that they serve to the American market, but uh, bang for your buck wine, Barbera is... I think one of the biggest growing um, varietals of grapes for winemaking in the. I like, like that. Yeah, yeah, it's similar. It's similar. Um, Dolcetto means. It means sweet, but it's not sweet. sweet but it, yeah, it's but this sweet. is a barbera. No, this yeah. isn't a dolcetto. Yeah. This is barbera. My last name is Barber, but let's clarify it has nothing <laughs> to do with barbera. It's a total coincidence. And it is one of my favorite wines. But I'm biased. This was uh, the wine I was basically drinking when I was six years old for dinner when I'd get, you know, the little little taste. Yeah. Um, well, that's, that's part of the Italian culture. You gotta have a little tiny bit of wine. It's for digestion. But um, anyway, Barbera is one of the biggest growing grape varietals. Even in the United States, they're starting to grow it. Um, and in my opinion, for a wine of this quality that you don't see in the expensive wine aisles and it's equal in in quality to a lot of these wines um part of the deal all spiced up has right now if you buy all three the duelilo is 15 dollars. i mean this this thing drinks like a 30 dollar bottle of wine um pizza i would say this and pizza any kind of pizza as long as it's not seafood pizza. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. I would just drink white wine with that. So let me show you guys on our old school atlas over here. The region that we're talking about when it comes to Nona and this particular wine that we're enjoying. Let me pull it up here to see if you guys can actually see it. Okay. That's good enough. So... The ponte, Tani. No, no, watch out with a knife. Oh my gosh, she wants me to point with a knife. I gotta <laughs> listen to her. Okay. Piemonte is this pink one right here. She was very excited to see earlier. Our town is actually on the map. There's not many maps that you'll see. But let me see if I can get it in the frame. It 
comes from, is that Osti right there? I believe so. Right there, right near the armpit. And the Alps are all right here, and the Apennines right in here. Apennines run all the way down, so that's why it's such a great winemaking region, because this whole area, <clears throat> um, it's in the armpit of two mountain ranges, and it's close enough to the Mediterranean to where in the fall, which is harvest season, there is an incredible fog. If you guys looked at my Facebook page um, within the past two hours, Nebbia, they La Nebbia. Nebbia. So there's another grape there called Nebbiolo. <laughs> but the wines from that region are so well sought after and they make such good wine with these grapes and it's because of the Nebbia, the, this fog. It's a low lying, it doesn't even Nebbiolo. look like... Right, but this is Barbera, this is Barbera. Okay. But the Nebbiolo is a type of grape. So, um, yeah, the fog rolls in and it's basically a cloud. It's a, it's a cloud that's only 10 feet above the ground and it rolls into the hills and you can't see the town below you and it's, it looks like Narnia. It's hard to describe. You can make snow angels in the fog. It's really, really cool. It's beautiful and it's the bacteria and the salt, salty air that comes off the Mediterranean that in this fog kind of makes the grapes have to fight for their life and go against all this other bacteria and outside forces um, that are in the fog. Uh, including the salt and everything and it, it makes unique wines that you can't really You can't replicate it really many other places on planet earth I mean people are figuring it out now, but no one's really been able to do it That's why you don't see a lot of these Piedmontese wines being grown outside of Piemonte so uh, Why, why you one? could not see uh, because they don't have La Nebbia. They don't have the Nebbia. Nebbia yeah um, Nebbia. I think Oregon and California they're working on it, but um you want a good Barbera you gotta go Piemonte or, or Lombardy as well. But uh, this particular one, like I said, I'll show you guys again. Barbera de Asti. The name of the wine is called Duelilu. That's just a name, I believe. Tu sai cosa? Okay, and the, the winery is Bonfante Chiarle. I don't think I said the name of the winery for the first one in case you guys. It's Cantina Tuderum. I apologize. I uh, probably got ahead of myself, but... Anyway, Bonfante Chiarle, and um, no, no, do you know what Duelilu means? It's, it's a, I, they named it in Piedmontese, the language. I have no idea, it means two something, que, due, que. due Lilu. Due Lilu? Yeah, it's Piemontese, do you know what that means? Lilu, due, I know, two. two. I think it's but, two birds, two, it's a little bird, Lilo. the name of the, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Mom, do you know? No. Nope. <laughs> The language is, is dying right in front of your guys' eyes, so um, that's all right. I love it, but trust me, Italian is a much more beautiful language. Okay, so we've been to central Italy. <clears throat> we've been to northern Italy. Now let's go all the way down south. Um, thousand miles or more. How many, how many thousands of miles do you think Puglia is from Piemonte? 2,000 miles? No, 1,500? It's, it's very far it's away. Far very far away. Yeah. So, because it's not, it's long. You it's very long, long yes. but it's Italy straight. is a very it's, long country. It's so, narrow. So, if you guys can see, you see the boot. We were just up there. Now, if we go to... The heel, I like to call it the stiletto. This is the region right there. It's called Puglia. They're very well known for winemaking, <clears throat> like almost every region in Italy. You can't really go anywhere in Italy without wine being one of the main um, things produced there. But Puglia is really well known for olives. They're, they have a huge olive production there. Um, winemaking, uh, seafood, and they have one particular pasta, if you guys have ever heard of it, it's called orecchiette, it means little ears. Orecchiette. And it's specific yeah. to that region. Every region has their own little pasta, and it's fantastic pasta. So anyway, what we have here, now the wine is called 12 um, e mezzo, and that means 12 and a half. So the name of the grape, that's just the name of the wine. The name of the grape is Primitivo, 
and it's Primitivo del Salento. Salento is on the very, almost on the tip of the stiletto of the heel of Puglia. It's as far south as you can go. There was a town called Monopoli pretty close by where all the crusaders sailed off during the crusades to uh, go to the Holy Land and have fun over there. <clears throat> so it's a really, really important historical region. Um, it was inhabited by the Greeks during ancient Greek times, the Romans, uh, the Italic tribes way, way back. Um, it's a very interesting, diverse area, um, and it's very hot. It's very warm, warm climate. Um, not as ma quella, quella, quella. It's famous for the cliffs. There's a lot of cliffs. Um, it's, it's got a ton of coastline for it not being a huge region. There's a lot of coastline. Um, fantastic seafood. I mean, just the freshest. Uh, if you think you've had fresh calamari. Quella vicino a Monte Vesuvio. No, that's in Campania. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, Primitivo, the name of the grape, <clears throat> you guys, maybe you're saying, oh, I think I've seen that or heard of it, um, but if I said Zinfandel to you, you go, oh, okay, not white Zinfandel, Zinfandel, just regular red wine Zinfandel, um, you say, okay, yeah, I know what that is. Um, it's one of the most planted grapes in all the United States. It's actually the same thing. The original name, or at least the Italian name, uh, for that grape, which I believe originate, originated in Croatia, before Puglia, um, they called it Primitivo. Uh, primi, I think, is because it was the first, and Primitivo because it's primitive, because it's primitive. a very, very, yeah. it's a primitive. very, very, primitive. Yeah. it's an old, primitivo. old grape. They think it's one of the first few grapes um, that was planted specifically for winemaking, not just for eating grapes. And we're talking, that is Puglia, right? we're talking thousands of years ago. Yep. So, um, this is essentially an Italian Zinfandel. Um, they wouldn't call it that over there. They call it Primitivo, and I think they called it this first before people started calling it Zinfandel. But that's neither here nor there. What matters is what's in the bottle. So, these are definitely going to be different than your American Zinfandels, just because the climate is a little different in that part of Italy than probably more of most of the areas in California where they grow Zinfandel. Um, so it's probably not gonna be quite as fruit forward. Um, the alcohol content on this is 12 and a half. So like I said, 14 for the Barbera is relatively high. Most American wines are 14, 15, they even get higher than that. Um, Italy doesn't like to really go over 14%. So this is 12 and a half percent. Uh, the nose is jammy. <clears throat> it tastes like jam and spice. I get some almost like vanilla, cinnamon, strawberry jam, a little bit of leather. Oh, wow. What do you think, Nona? You like it? It's più dolce, no? Come? It's più, più frutta. Più frutta. Yeah. Frut, frutta. So it's fruity. Fruity. It's, it's fruity. fruity, but it's big, full-bodied. Uh, it's got this jammy kind of characteristic to it. Uh, I even get a little bit of tobacco on the end, which is really nice. Um, and that gives it a, kind of more of a hardiness. So it's fruity, but not sweet. There's not any sweetness really at all in this wine. It's bone dry. But right up front, it's like biting into a piece of uh, toast with fresh uh, strawberry jam on it. And then it finishes with a nice rounded, kind of earthy, spicy kind of tobacco finish, which um, is perfect for if you have like grilled meat. Any red meat would be perfect with this. Um, specifically, I would say lamb. I, I, am, I love lamb. I love lamb. <laughs> uh, Nona knows I cook, I cook lamb for her all the time. She makes it risotto, I make the lamb. That's all that matters. But um, yeah. I know, I've bought this at All Spiced Up not too long ago, and uh, man, we oh, used it. Lamb in Italian. Agnello. Agnello. Wow, that's the first right. Italian lesson I've ever given my grandmother. I've, Agnello. I can die happy Agnello. now. Yeah. Well, first thing I've ever remembered that she didn't remember how to say in Italian. Um, anyway. Agnello yeah. means the, the, the baby of the, of the, uh, 
the baby of the... Come si chiamano? Non lo so, no. Agnello <laughs> is the baby of the... Not cow, of the... Of pecore. A goat. Goat. Yeah. Yeah, Agnello yeah, yeah, is, goat. is the baby of the goat. <laughs> so, um... Anyway, it all spiced up. Um, man, I think you guys just call it a uh, something lamb, and it's a spice blend that you guys make like specifically for lamb, and it's got a ton of rosemary in it. I just finished my packet of it. <clears throat> we cooked lamb more times in one week than uh, somebody that's not a, a king of an empire should be eating. Um, I'm only 31, but man, if I'm gonna get gout, it's gonna happen soon. Um, but yeah, the lamb. The lamb rub that you guys have at All Spice Up is absolutely incredible. Go get a rack of Australian lamb, or if you can, Colorado lamb. If you can find it, Italian lamb. I don't know if they have that here. Um, cover the rack in that spice. Be, go overboard with it. It's delicious. It's not too salty. Cuts through the fat perfectly. Throw it on the grill. Dunque Pour a glass of this. Scusami. She's still le on the go. Well, let's go. We gotta let her finish. Are the, 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 the... The, it's a goat. Goat. Agnello è il, il piccolo. Yeah, it's a lamb. Il piccolo. Yeah, yeah. Il piccolo. Yeah. Del, piccolo yeah. del, Ho fatto del agnello del, tutti i giorni. Sì, sì, sì. So, back to the wine. Um, so, 12 and a half, 12 e mezzo. 12 is 12 in Italian. Primitivo, which is Zinfandel. Del Salento. Salento is the town in Puglia where it's made. Um, this no, with Salento the three bottles. Salento is a of a region, Annie. Right. Right. It's, it's a, it's a yeah. sub. It's a province, yeah, basically. Yeah, it's a small region. So with the deal that they got going on with all three of these, um, the Primitivo is 16, the Barbera is 15, and the Grechetto, which was the white wine that we tried initially, is 12. I'll line these up for you guys. Hopefully you can see them here. There's the Grechetto, that was the first one, just so you guys can, I don't know, if you, you want to go in the shop and you can't remember what it was called, and you don't want to have to reference and go through this whole video, maybe take a screenshot. That was the Grechetto, this is the Barbera d'Asti, Duelilu. We made rotisserie, ooh, rotisserie leg of lamb. Oh, that sounds incredible. Oh yeah, I've had the Tuscan blend as well. I've had the Tuscan blend as well, Veronica. Yeah, oh wow, you guys did a rotisserie whole leg. Oh my goodness. That's, uh, my grill is too small for that. I gotta, we gotta up our grill game. We gotta get the full spit style where you, where you turn it. <laughs> then our neighbors will probably call the fire department on us, but whatever. It's worth it for a good meal. Okay, it's called, yeah, it's just called lamb seasoning. Thank you, Bronwyn. Lawrence, vieni da qui, Kiko. Oh, hey, Marie. Hey, Lawrence. Marie's in here. Yes, Anna, I will, I will try and bring Nun up there as soon as possible. Once the COVID starts to die down, that's why we're trying to get enough disinfectant in our system. So anyway, you guys, um... Stop by All Spiced Up, pick up a bottle of each of these uh, while well, you can still get a discount on them. Um, I love doing stuff like this. I hope to see you guys on here again very soon or maybe at All Spiced Up. And uh, when everything starts to clear up, hopefully we can do one of these tastings in person at All Spiced Up. And uh, if you guys have any requests for any particular wines, feel free to reach out to me um, or reach out to them and they'll ask me if we carry it. Um, because we don't just do Italian wines, we, we import from all different corners of the globe. Um, really, really good quality stuff that we just had here. Um, I'm really glad I had an opportunity to do this and introduce everyone to La Nonna. She, la knows, nonna. she knows her stuff, Nonna. So let, uh, let me, before we go, Nonna. Nonna means grandmother. I, mean. I, I know that, Nonna. I've been calling know, you that for 31 me. years. Yeah. Nonna means grandmother. That's not her name. Her name is Fiorella. Um, so Nona, tell me a little bit more before we get off of here yeah. about uh, Bis Nonno and, and Bis, Bis Nonno, how, how they made the wine. Um, they were making it in the cantina, which is essentially our basement. It's a deep, 
mountain scary. <laughs> I mean, it it's, looks like it's out of a horror movie. It's very muggy, cobwebs everywhere. And you want it to be like that. You want as much moisture in there as you can. Because then corks will dry out. You want to keep everything kind of muggy inside of a cantina. Essentially the basement of the house. And that's where the winemaking uh, equipment was. Yeah. Now, did he used to... We had a, a drain that went from the driveway into the cantina. That, so you'd squash the grapes yes. in the driveway. And then it went... This is cool. It went through a gutter, essentially, into a, a, a cistern. Yeah. Where that collected the juice, uh, I mean, which at the time was yeah. like a technological marvel to, you know, be able to not just have those classic stands where they stand over a bucket and squish it, to actually do it and have it go directly into the cistern where you're collecting it from the driveway under the house. Um, really, really cool. And he would take the leftover, uh, the, the skins and the seeds and the stems, and he would make, I don't know if you guys are familiar with grappa, um, it's, it's the it's the fuel of the future. If you ever run out of gas and you have a bottle of grappa in your back seat, you'll make it to where you're going. <laughs> it's uh, it's distilled basically the excess things you have left over from winemaking. Um, you distill and turn it into hard liquor. It's like Italian moonshine. It's very strong. Um, it gets the job done. I'll say that much. But uh. I've had some good ones before. I never got a chance to try my great grandfather's or great great grandfather's, but they were pretty famous for their grappa, right? Oh, as well yes. as the wine. Oh, very Oh, no, tell everyone about how was it Nono Gino or Nono Michele that sold to the to the rehabilitation. What was it? In Nono Michele. Yeah, okay. In Inglese, in Inglese and say it say it to the camera. Uh, uh, grandfather, grandfather Michele. Yeah. yeah. What did he do? He yeah. sold wine. Most he of his wine, wine that he sold to to uh, those people where uh, which uh, they, they had um, it was a old... rehabilitation. Okay, but mostly it was older people, right? Yeah. Uh, it was a well, yeah. It could have been anything. The rehabilitation, yeah. and then uh, they. What can I say? The, the, uh, yeah, there the were a rehab center. That was his main account for selling his his, his 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 label of wine that he was making from the yeah. from the area of land that he owned. Yes, and then yeah. and then they will give that to this rehabilitation people. They were giving no 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 Michele wine. So they were giving, they no, he was giving them wine. Huh? He was giving them the wine. They weren't giving yeah, it to yeah, him. Yeah, 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 yeah. Course, <laughs> he didn't need it. He had plenty. No, it was a... <laughs> of course, the rehabilitation, you know, that it's... Uh, and, and, they, and, and those people, they, were, they saw, they, uh, no, no, Michele just sold them for, I don't 30 know years, many 40 years, years yep. for, uh, uh, yep. probably 30 years, for 30 years. They want, no, 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 no Michele wine yep. for the rehabilitation person saving the world one sip at a time visiting your home in the fall fog is now on my bucket list oh yes best month to see the la nebbia probably october right october yeah yeah la october yeah october absolutely and it's cool because if you go in october um they call it la, la vendemia and that's when they they harvest the grapes uh, different weeks of, of the month of October, and maybe even a little bit in November or September. Yes, yes. But October is the main month. And, and they, they have fi wine festivals everywhere. Every town you go to, there's they some wine were, festivals where they dump wine in the streets and they, they, they dye everything red with wine. They why Nonno no, no, no Michele has this, uh, the best wine. Because he, he'd late, he picked it later than everyone else. He was right? just, you know, sometimes people, do you know, they were... They're impatient. They're, they were you impatient. You know, very patient and they won't take it, you know, because you never know, you know, if it's raining. Right. But he was, he, he took this, uh, this... Uh, late, later, later, after, right. And so, and... So he, was, what you're saying is he essentially, uh, a lot of the other winemakers from our town and the towns yeah. nearby they would they, they were really, it's a little bit of a risk if you wait later to to pick your grapes it's a little bit of a risk 
especially because the rainy season is kind of starting and you, you it's you're totally screwed if but the, if the rainy the, season has started he risked that he risked it he risked he it but risk it. it worked out for him every time i mean I, I, he probably didn't have one bad year if if any I um risked he risked it, it and they, everyone was wondering why why his wine was so much better than everyone else's and you know, there's the risk and reward ratio kind of paid off for Because them. more they stay, the grapes stay, yeah. and more they And who, get who helped him pick the wines? Yeah. Who helped him? Did anyone help him, or was it just him? Oh, him, him and the family. Yeah, and the family, the right, family. right, right, right. You know, the family. Uh, Gia Maria, Gia Lina. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, Barbera, you can get Barbera. Anywhere in Northwest Italy, it's very common, very common wine, very inexpensive, very, very high quality. It's probably the best bang for your buck wine right. I've ever had in my entire life. Um, yeah, if you ever visit Piemonte, um, there's a town called Barolo, which is Piemonte probably the most the, famous the, wine the, town in Italy uh, outside Piemonte of some of the Tuscan what places. what that mean? Is the foot of the mountain. Of yeah. the mountain. Yep. Pie is foot, Monte is mountain. Um, there's your Italian lesson for the day. Um, anyway, so back to the wine. Grecchetto, nice seafood. Um, go pick up a bag of their Anglers, the Angler Spice Blend, or the Avondale's Finest. That's a really good one, too. Uh, this one is 12. Nice, delicate, light, crisp, acidic, not too fruity. This is not your, like, your Woodbridge Pinot Grigio. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that, but... It's just a different flavor profile. It's not sweet. It's beautiful, dry, crisp. 12 bucks. Barbera d'Asti. Um, 15. Like I said, bang for your buck. You, you'll feel like you're drinking a $40 bottle of wine. Um, Primitivo, Zinfandel, a.k.a. Zinfandel. But don't call it a Zinfandel. <laughs> uh, this one's 16. This one's jammy, big, full-bodied, uh, perfect for like any gamey, red meat, ribeye, steak, lamb, uh, leg of lamb. If you're doing a whole leg of lamb, I better I better see you post some pictures drinking a bottle of this with their uh, lamb seasoning. You're going to have to buy a whole jar of the lamb seasoning if you're doing a leg. Um, <laughs> uh, anyway, Bronwyn, Anna, you guys have any questions for Nonna? If it wasn't for her, I wouldn't be her wine rep, so. She, uh, I was, uh, the, the legend of, of my wine sales started about 27 years ago when she started feeding me wine for, for dinner. All right. What would I recommend for a special night? Mmm, I mean... It depends on, I guess, a, a special night, uh, meaning like you're, you're probably having a nice dish of food with the wine. Uh, if it's seafood, I would definitely do the white. And, and just about any seafood, except for salmon. Salmon, because it's a more heavy red fish, or fleshy fish, uh, either of the reds would be okay. I would probably do the Barbera with, if you're doing like a salmon. Um, anniversary sounds like it's uh sounds like it's like a ribeye or filet mignon kind of night so um yeah i would go with the primitivo it's a little more robust it'll hang it'll it'll stand up to all those fatty kind of flavors and you know gamey flavors you get in, in red meat or lamb or any kind of beef or stew even if you make like a nice stew uh, what's Nona's favorite wine? Oh man, she's she's biased. She's totally biased, like me. Uh, this this is actually her favorite. Anything that says Barbera on it, and she happens to really like this one. Um, Barbera. Yeah, Barbera is. Uh, she was she was raised on it in, in her in her milk bottle. And also Dolcetto. And also Dolcetto, Dolcetto. Even though Dolcetto is very similar to Barbera, it's grown in the same region. Um, it's not sweet, even though the name sounds like it would imply that it's sweet. Um, vuoi un altro bicchiere di vino? No, no. no ce n'ho qui ancora, okay. ce n'ho okay. qui, non voglio ubriacarmi. Ok, she said don't get me drunk. <laughs> mm. 
You're welcome. Uh, happy anniversary or almost anniversary or whatever, whatever's coming up, if it's coming up soon. Um, yeah, definitely stop by All Spiced Up to, if you're doing your anniversary for a home cooked meal, that's, that's my style, you know. I'll, I'll go out to eat if I'm bored, but if it's a big occasion for me, I usually stay in and beg Nona to make me some risotto and fire up the grill and get the biggest hunk of meat and squash or zucchini I can find and throw it on the grill. Yeah, we'll definitely try dolcetto next time. Definitely. And dolcetto is a much... Uh, Barbera, you're starting to see in the United States a lot more dolcetto. It is very hard to find any dolcetto anywhere. Um, it's a very similar wine. Um, it's funny, another interesting thing about Barbera, the grapes in the region of Piemonte, was that it was Caesar Augustus and Mark Antony. They were both uh, in love. This is this is some real history for you. Nona was yeah. an, Nona was not alive during this time, right, Nona? Um, they, they traveled to Piemonte from Rome, which is an incredibly long distance. It's probably like from here to Maryland. What would you say, Lawrence? Rome to Rome to Piemonte. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, it's like from from Jacksonville to like Maryland. Yeah. I mean, they did this on horseback. Obviously, this is Roman mm -hmm. time or whatever. However, they did it. Um, they did it by fiat. <laughs> but uh, they, they went all the way to Piemonte because Piemonte was famous for having like the sweetest grapes and making the best wine. So they went all the way to Piemonte to get some grapes, fresh grapes and, and wines from that region. I mean, this is deep into antiquity. I mean, BC. Um, they were both in love with Cleopatra from Alexandria of Egypt. Mm -hmm. And they brought her the grapes and wine all the way to Alexandria, which from where we're from is like... From here to, I don't know, Nova Scotia? No, further than that. It's like from here to nor the northern east coast of Canada. Just yeah. to bring her the grapes, and they, and they were still fresh when they got there, apparently. And uh, I don't know. I don't know how it worked out for both of them. Um, I, don't, I think she was a one-guy kind of girl, but I don't know. Which one would go with the cheese and pa- Oh, cacio e pepe. Oh, ti piace cacio e pepe. Pasta cacio e pepe. Gacho e Pepe is one of my all-time favorites because I love the simplicity of it. Um, for Cacho e Pepe, definitely. Definitely this. The butteriness of the Cacho e Pepe um, and the Barbera has a nice, like, kind of um, peppery, spicy kind of flavor to it. It'll, it'll absolutely the perfect wine to what pair with it. What about the Barbaresco? Well, we're just not tr tasting Barbaresco because my pockets aren't deep enough to, to drink Barbaresco tonight. Yeah. But that's another wine. That's another wine from Guimonte. Yes, definitely Barbera, 100%. Um, man, I love, I love Cacio e Pepe. It's one of the most simple. I mean, the, the thing with Italian food is people think it's all complicated and it's not. It should never really be more than three main ingredients. I mean, you can have a little things here on the side, but you never want too many things battling with each other to be the dominant flavor. Wouldn't you say that's true, Don? That's every, that's three, basically everything has three ingredients, three main ingredients, you know, three main flavors yeah, at least. Yeah. Okay, Don, you wanna say bye to everybody? I yeah, think bye she's gonna everybody. walk off. Yeah. Bye everybody. I'm Say ciao. Yeah. She's going. She's going to run a marathon. She'll be back <laughs> soon. Um, <laughs> anyway, thank you guys for for joining us. I had a really good time, and it's fun to just sit down and drink some wine with with Nona. I don't know if you guys can see her latch hook. We have like these are covering all over our house. She she hand stitches these, and uh, yeah, it's um. It's a classic uh, Italian grandma house and it's just cool to be able to drink wine with my grandma and get some cool stories and, you know, see see where this all comes from. Anyway, guys, um, hopefully I'll see you soon at All Spiced Up and uh, we can do this again in person. Um, okay, arrivederci, ciao, buona serata, buongiorno, I don't even know what time of day it is, buona serata, oops. <laughs>